everyone, welcome back to Death Battles Winner Takes All Tournament, uh, Round 1, Part 2. So, because we had so many combatants in the Death Battle Tournament, and we'll have so many in the Loser Tournament too, uh, I had to do Part 1, the Round 1, in two parts. It was just, it was too big. Uh, also, I uh, should note, just to reemphasize that the way I'm going about it is I am just, this is more or less my opinion, with a little bit of the information we get from Death Battle. Like, anything that seems relevant in Death Battle's calculations applies here as well. Lastly, there were actually, turns out, a couple uh, combatants that I had forgotten to include on the list. Not that I didn't know they were going to be in the tournament. I knew they were going to be in the tournament, I wrote them down, but for some reason, when I was making, when I was randomizing the uh, the characters for their matches, somehow they got lost in the fray. So I figured I'd just go in that. But without further ado, let's get into it. First up was Samus versus Gundam Epion. Uh, to me, this one came down to really Gundam Epion is larger, and I know Samus has taken down larger opponents before. I do, I don't know a lot about um, Metroid or Gundam, but I do know that Samus has taken down larger opponents. But Samus has had many different variations on her suit. The suit itself does, can be destroyed and break. And the Gundam Epion is a it's, it's a machine designed for battle. It is it is a battle suit Gundam for a reason. Uh, add on the fact the Epion system is pretty much a I can see the future kind of thing. Samus at best would have a mobility advantage to some degree as she would be so small. Epion might have some trouble. Epion is smaller too by normal Gundam uh, standards. Uh, but ultimately, Epion would win that fight, 100%. Uh, then you had uh, poor Blanca. I would have liked to see Blanca make it farther. I knew Blanca wouldn't have won, but you had to go up against Akuma of all things, first and foremost. Uh, it's Akuma, man. Like, only Ryu be beat Akuma, and only in, uh, like, the storyline. Like, uh, Ryu's actual story, like, in the series. Uh, Blanca, I mean, Blanca probably wouldn't go down without a fight, certainly. Blanca might, you know, shock Akuma a little bit, maybe get a couple decent shots in, but Akuma ultimately would take that fight wholehandedly. No problem whatsoever. Rogue versus Spider-Man was a tough one. Um, and that's because, despite, physically speaking, Rogue's powers and durability and flight and all that can fluctuate depending on your interpretation. Generally, I'd say she is stronger than Peter. She is. Like, she's stronger, she can fly, she's more invulnerable than he is, and her mutation is far more dangerous than anything he actually has. On the other hand, he's still physically very powerful, able to at least keep up with her. He's got better tech with his web shooters and some spider gadgets he carries. He's more intelligent, and his spider sense gives him a better a sense of awareness. So it came down to who I think is going to win in a long-term fight. Because his suit is going to prevent her from having any skin contact on him, but that's only going so far until the suit rips and she's, he's got exposed skin. At that point, all she has to do is make skin contact, and there you go. Uh, and but that's assuming she can touch him with the spider sense reacting. I think she's going to tire him down uh, out and wear him out before she, he wears her out, uh, because I think she's not, he's not going to be able to throw anything at her that she can't already handle. So ultimately, I had to go rogue uh, on that one. Zangief versus Mai Shinoyuni. Um, she had actually already beaten uh, Chun-Li, and obviously Zangief is from Street Fighter. He's clearly got the physical advantage, but honestly, I think her ninja training and, you know, similar, like, combat style training, I think gives her an edge over this particular Street Fighter as well. If you were, she were going up against, say, like, Ryu or Bison or, um, or Akuma, no, they would probably beat her, but, uh, no, Zangief more than likely will take that win. Uh, Leonardo versus Tao Kaka. Um, this one I found re also never difficult. The side B of round one proved to be a bit more difficult for me to kind of determine than side one. Than, uh, side one. If you think these are, if you think the idea of who would win right now in round one is difficult. Wait till we get to later rounds. Oh, we, we're going to be having some conversations coming up later uh, next week. But Tao Kaka, she's definitely more unpredictable than Leo is. Uh, I believe it's mana that they draw on, or something akin to mana uh, in the Blaze Blue universe that allows her to um, use the ability she has. Um, but the question is, is simply this. Does Leonardo have the abilities to overcome her? He's certainly a better fighter. He's more trained. He's more level-headed. 
Uh, if we're going by death battle rules, then we'll give him access to the sword that lets him teleport. Um, and he's got a bit better defense than she does. She, he's not as squishy as she is due to the fact that he is a turtle uh, with a shell and he's just got thicker muscles. Uh, he is better, like I said, he's better trained, so he should be able to, and he's got great reflexes. So he should be able to, in theory, keep up with whatever it is she's going to dish out, even if he gets taken by surprise. But the counter argument to that is she still got, she can still attack out of the blue with deadly abilities. So it's tough. I leaned towards Leonardo in this. I think he's got to, I think it's kind of like Jack versus Afro where Jack had, would, had dealt with tricky opponents, so is Leonardo, and he's got the resources to keep up with her, whereas she's clearly going to tire herself out. Plus, he's actually very intelligent. She's not. So that helps uh, play into a factor as well. Uh, so I went Leonardo. <laughs> Poor green dinosaur. Managed to even survive re-entering the Earth's at re-entering re re a planet's atmosphere several times. Tanked explosives to the face. Gone up against the flood. I mean... Yoshi might swallow him once and try to do what he did against Raptor and throw him into some lava, poop, like poop an egg into some lava with him in it. But Master Chief can walk that off like it's a lazy Sunday. So, yeah, and Master Chief honestly would just shoot Yoshi and Yoshi's dead. I mean, if we're going to have fun with it, Yoshi survives a couple shots, but any of the heavy caliber weapons that Master Chief has isn't going to work or isn't, uh, Yoshi's not going to survive that. So, Master Chief wins that fight, 100%. Another one, it's weird. Princess Peach versus Spawn. I, I felt bad. I, this one didn't, this, I, this uh, thumbnail didn't crop well. Um, actually, you know, I can ex make that a little bigger. Hold on. There we go. Now it's cropped better. Um, uh, <laughs> Spawn versus Princess Peach. I mean, she does have a couple of abilities, like the frying pan, the kicking her butt, the, the, the sheep thing, but... Well, it's not Mint's word. Spawn will tear her soul limb from limbs. Or limb from limbs. So, yeah, that's that's all Spawn, 100%. <laughs> he can, he would uh, just tear apart with the chains alone, let's be frank. Fortunately, she can't. he can't feed off her sins like he did with Kratos, though. That is one thing we should note. That this is not a fight where he can just freely just use his abilities uh, like he did with Kratos, because he could feed off all the sins and evil energy that Kratos had. Can't do that with her. That said, he's still got plenty of energy he can use. So, yeah, he, he beats her. Dig Dug versus Superman. Um, look, this is not this is not one of those, let's make it up. And like, Dig Dug could win if you had a kryptonite trail. It's like, yeah, but that's not what we do here. We They're going in blind with no prep. That's why Batman's match is going to suck in a little while. Um, Superman would make mincemeat of Dig Dug. That's just, that's, that's just it. He'd make mincemeat of Dig Dug. Uh, then you have Vegeta versus Link. This one's interesting in my mind because it's not about who would win. Obviously, Vegeta will win. He's got a universal level of power to him. It's a question of whether or not, not whether or not, but how long would Link be able to last against Vegeta? That's the question. Frankly, I don't think it would be long. I mean, yeah, Vegeta might indulge him and, you know, play out and say, Shut, give me your best shot! And, you know, Link says, yeah, 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 it's just... And I was like, oh, a boomerang. How quaint. Let me show you what real power's like. And, you know, just come in and just beat the crap out of Link. Uh, and he probably could one-shot Link in a heartbeat. That's it. All If the Triforce of Power, and I liked how Death Battle calculated that, that the Triforce of Power was created by the gods Din who created the Earth, so they highballed it on, like, a high planetary level of power. Made sense. Honestly, that makes perfect sense. Vegeta can blow up planets with his finger, for God's sake. He literally is, it has universal levels of power. He just doesn't have a technique like, say, the Hakai or something that could destroy the universe. In theory, I guess Beerus could do that with the Hakai. But furthermore, his power, he's got enough control over it where it does not just radiate out willy-nilly and or threaten the universe. So Vegeta wins that, no questions. Luke versus Deadpool was a really weird one. The Jedi mind trick really would not work, I think, on uh, Deadpool. And uh, not because he's um, not kind of on the more... Deadpool's not an idiot, he's insane. There's a difference. I mean, yes, he acts like an idiot, but that is partly due to the fact that he's just a flamboyant personality. Um, and he's fourth wall aware. So, it's... I don't think it's fair to say the Jedi mind trick would work on him. And plus, the multiple personalities in his head probably have something to say about the Jedi mind trick. But yeah, Deadpool's a better hand-to-hand -hand fighter. That I had no argument against. 
But it's more the fact that, take that out of the equation, maybe the teleportation could give Luke a weird sort of, like, issue to deal with? But you take those out of the equation, and Luke's, the, the a lightsaber cauterizes as it cuts, meaning the devil not only has to heal from a dismemberment, he's got to heal a burn on top of that dismemberment, which would be a problem for reattaching, because one area, I mean, Deadpool can technically grow from another hand, but that was a weird magic thing. Uh, that happened. Deadpool's blades can't handle the lightsaber, but Luke has the force, so he can just literally stop bolts or pull the guns out of his hand. Teleportation belt might be an issue for Luke at first, but he's the force also allows a level of precognition, so he'd be able, or kind of like a spidey sense almost, so he'd be able to get out of the way before any teleportation shenanigans could really hurt him in a bad way. Uh, I feel like Deadpool actually really does lose to Luke pretty handily, so Luke uh, takes that victory. Thor versus Rainbow Dash. Now, for anyone who's been who watched my Goku versus Thor video, um, if you are maybe one of the people who commented on that or have just seen the comments, you'll know that people got on my case for A, lowballing Thor a little bit to somewhat of a planetary level individual, and B, using some death battle stats. Let's let's uh, let's uh, talk about the death battle stats first. I don't use death battle stats that often. I'll use them when I feel they're relevant. And if you'd like that, great. If you agree with that, great. If you don't, that's fine. Thor being kind of lowballing Thor to some degree. I'll admit, I, I, when thinking back on that, I did feel it does feel like I lowballed him a bit. But um, what's the best way to put it? Thor, by his own power, is not a universal being. He's a cosmic being, but that doesn't make him universal. It's kind of like Thanos is a cosmic being and a universal threat, but not a universal being. Um. And it's not, it's because then Thor's own power does not threaten the universe on its own. Thor might do something that could, in theory, threaten the universe, but that doesn't make him a universal in that god. Yes, he has access to the Odin Force to some degree, but he can't necessarily affect the fabric of time and space and reality just with his own power. He usually either needs more power or it's a mitigating circumstances that could allow that. Um, that being said, I know the fact Thor, Thor can trade blows with, you know, he can trade blows with the Hulk, he's beaten the Hulk, he's killed Sentry, granted the Sentry let him do that, but still, he's killed Sentry before, he's, um, he's been a herald of Galactus, he can go do that with Galactus and has been a herald of Galactus, putting him on the same level of power and kind of as a Silver Surfer, he is currently fighting Null in the, um, King of Black storyline, so, yeah, don't get me wrong, I'm very much aware of how powerful Thor actually is, it just really wouldn't have mattered in case of would he have beaten Goku. No, Goku, I still think, would have beaten him pretty soundly. Uh, in this case, though, Thor, I think, beats Rainbow Dash 100% because it's a pony. I don't think any... Po uh, excuse me. It's an alicorn. I apologize. Uh, actually, is it an alicorn? I don't think uh, Rainbow Dash is a head. I think Rainbow Dash is a pegasus. I take that back. Um, but... Um, I don't think any My Little Pony character, save maybe Discord because of the nature of Discord could take a hit from Mjolnir and live. So, yeah, Thor Thor takes that fight. Uh, then you got He-Man he fighting Ke Orchid from Killer Instinct. By the by, some of these characters I had to find try really hard not to find overly sexualized images of, Orchid being one of them. Um, I mean, and I mean, even that's like, whew. Um, I mean, th that's how she looks in the game, so that's what we want with. But, yeah, I mean, she could turn intangible tiger or jaguar, leopard, whichever form it was, uh, and, you know, survive, and, and is a good fighter, but He-Man is literally someone who could go toe-to-toe -to -toe in comics and has with Superman. So, and he's got the power of Graysaw, Battle Cat, the whole nine yards. So, yeah, He-Man takes that victory, in my opinion. The whole turning into a frog thing, I believe, was just like a final finisher. Uh, so I don't think she's going to turn him into a frog. And even if she does, he's still He-Man just as a frog. So take that for what it's worth. Shao Kahn versus um, Toph. Toph is actually much stronger than, say, the Earth Mover in... I can't remember. Tremor, maybe, is that the character's name? The Earth Mover in Mortal Kombat. He, she's much more powerful than him. So it would probably give Shao Kahn a decent fight. Shao Kahn, though, is an Elder God. Uh, he has m many different forms of magic, clean the green energy, whatever it's called. Uh, he can combine realms together. Now, that doesn't make him univer multiversal per se. That make, He has multiversal type powers, but and he does threaten universes in that sense. But he 
unlike someone say like let's use the omni king for example uh in dragon ball super uh, omni king can literally just wipe out a universe like that like just like that that's a multiversal threat like right there that, that is a multiversal being on, on a high tier just wiping out universes like it's nothing shao Kahn can't do that uh <laughs> Now, that being said, he can affect universes, other realms, absolutely, but he's not hes not that level of powerful, at least not from what I can find. That said, though, um, Shao Kahn is still another god. He has still got the physiology of a god, has many different forms of magic, including just sucking out souls. He couldn't theory just suck out Toph's soul and be done with it. But that being said, each soul is unique and different, so it, Toph, Toph might not be an individual who he can suck the soul out of. Uh, his hammer, it could be a valuable weapon to him if she wasn't a metal bender and just take that and use it against him. I actually think she'd give him a pretty tough fight because he'd have to fight the earth, or the earth she throws at him, and that's a lot of power. And then he takes, she takes her weapon, even takes his helmet, and maybe just squishes on his head. Granted, I think he does win in the long haul because he's got an Elder God physiology, so he can outlast her very easily. But ultimately, I go, um... I go to Shao Kahn, but it's not a close, it's a closer fight than I think a lot of people would give it credit for. Uh, Strider Hero versus Fox McCloud. Oh, it's Strider Hero all day. He's, Fox McCloud's awesome. I love the Bucky, I might actually rewatch that episode when I'm done. The Bucky O'Hare versus Fox McCloud episode. Captain, Captain Bucky, you care? He goes, we'll never ever ever rabbit with dead. Ah, the righteous indignation, yeah. Uh, I don't actually remember watching that series, but maybe I should. But yeah, Fox McCloud, he, he has blasters, sure, and he's a tough fighter, but Strider Hero is a like cyber ninja with a lightsaber-esque blade that he can literally and he can literally rip people apart with his bare hands. No. Fox McCloud's toast. <laughs> Blastoise versus Robocop. Okay, so this is where I'll bring Death Battle in, because they show that the cannons that Blastoise has fire water at a extremely high pressurized velocity to the point where uh, th there's a reason that Blastoise completely killed um, Charizard the way it did in their fight. But, it, add on to the fact, it's also very bulky Pokemon. It's got a high defense. But, it's still, I think, lacking in a few areas that would allow it to actually beat Robocop. Robocop's small arm fire probably wouldn't do much uh it, it probably just wouldn't uh get many uh get many uh lethal injuries in on blastoise and shell would protect it anything else to do shell because we know robocop has rockets laser cannon flamethrower that wouldn't work very much because of water type um and high caliber anti-tank rounds uh and durable enough to survive massive explosions tank laser blasts and strong enough to reverse a hydraulic press while Blastoise's water might even damage RoboCop, RoboCop ultimately would, I think, pull out the win. Another one where I have to laugh a bit. Tails versus Fulgore. Now, Tails is a lot stronger than we gave him credit for, that's certain. So I had to, and Fulgore, I think, only has one real range weapon. It's like an energy cannon in the chest. So I had to figure out, I was like, okay, how does this fight ultimately come down? And I realized that the only way it comes down is the fact that Tails would mostly have to get in close to use any sort of real abilities uh, to kill Fulgar. And Fulgar's bread and, brother is, bread and butter is close range, and with those basically lightsaber gauntlet blades, he's going to really much just cut uh, tails into smithereens. So, yeah, it, it's... Yeah, I went Fulgar on that, but I could see a unique argument for tails. Batman versus Godzilla in a perfect world where he had prepped to hell. He'd honestly just use the Justice Buster, and that'd probably be enough. Um, but in a perfect world where he had time, he'd make his own Mecha Godzilla, and because it's Batman, it'd be awesome, and we'd kill Pit and beat King, uh, Godzilla. But that's not the world we live in. Batman, with all the things he carries on him normally, has nothing to bring down a giant, nearly 400 foot tall, and we're using the uh, just jet. We're well, using the legendary stats of Godzilla as the biggest one. Uh, we're not using Godzilla Earth for obvious reasons. Uh, but because so you, we composite Godzilla is what happens. But a, a near 400 pound, uh, the th 400 foot tall, three 100 and some odd ton, uh, or tens of hundreds of tons, or tens of thousands of tons, atomic lizard who can tank nukes and just get stronger like it's you know uh, steroids. So. Yeah, no, Godzilla beats Batman. Sorry, Bats, I would have liked to see you go a little further. 
Scorpion versus Kirby. Now, I stand as one of the people who re actually disagrees with the Kirby versus Majin Buu fight. I do think Majin Buu should have won that fight. It's one of the few times I legitimately disagree with Death Battle. Like, I don't rare, I don't very often disagree with them. I generally think, even if I'm wrong in my uh, my opinion of the like who won, the way they rationalize it usually makes sense to me. But this was a case where, like, no, Boo should have actually easily beat Kirby. I, I'm I'm not really certain where they're getting this kind of info. Of course, that was early Death Battle, too. I do feel like they've gotten better at... Not all the time. Sometimes I feel they dropped the ball. But it's it's become less that I feel they dropped the ball. So against Scorpion, do I feel like Kirby actually could win? As long as the fight doesn't go to hell, yes. Because as Death Battle showed, as long as Scorpion's in hell, he will keep getting stronger. And, you know, unless you have a proper way of taking out Scorpion, then you are going to die. And... Kirby, I don't think, has a proper way to take out Scorpion. And this fight eventually will go to hell. So, because that's just what Scorpion's going to do. So, ultimately, yeah, I got to go Scorpion in this fight. Soul Bad Guy versus Iron Man. This came down to who's going to dish out more damage and who can take more damage. That that was literally all that it came down to. And, fortunately, Tony's suits already automatically provide him more defense than Soul Bad Guy's belts. So... Even though Soul Bad Guy can easily destroy mountains and um, gears and all that, giant monsters, Tony can tank nukes. His Endosim armor alone could probably absorb most, if not all, the energy that Soul Bad Guy throws at him. So I had to go Iron Man in this fight. Goliath versus Solid Snake is an interesting matchup. Uh, now, Goliath has dealt with individuals similar to Solid Snake before in the series, but no one near the same skill level as Salt Snake, obviously, because Salt Snake is Salt Snake. But Salt Snake is still just human. Yeah, he's got firearms, sure, and Goliath is not bulletproof, as we find out no in the series. But that said, it's still one of those things where, yeah, Goliath might not be bulletproof, but he's still far more physically uh, dangerous of an opponent than uh, to Solid Snake than Solid Snake is to him. So ultimately, I had to go Goliath. Doctor Doom versus Carolina. Carolina could put up a solid fight. She's in the not the same tier, but same type of universe as Master Chief. Um, she's definitely a highly trained. She actually probably is a better fighter physically than Doom is, even though Doom's a really good fighter. But Doom's tech, technology, and genius really just overwhelms her, in my opinion. So Doom gets that uh, that win. Flash beats Donkey Kong. I don't think anyone of us is going to argue that. So let's just move on from that real quick. Raiden versus Terry, or Raiden, I can't remember. I think it's Raiden. Uh, Raiden versus Terry Bogard is an interesting one. Because uh, I think he's that Terry's actually just the better hand-to-hand -hand fighter. But let's be honest. Durability, regenerative capability-wise, weapons-wise, and psychologically, Raiden is the far more dangerous individual. And especially if he goes into Jack the Ripper mode, Terry can maybe hit him with energy, but uh, like an energy attack, but Terry is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Raiden has provided plenty of serious hits that I don't think Terry's got enough firepower in him to take out uh, Raiden. So Raiden wins. Hercule Satan versus Hawkeye. I don't think it's in any con uh, contestion that, uh, con I don't think it's going to be contested that Hawkeye's going to win this fight. And not for nothing else, actually, because he's got, hey, he's got weapons of plenty of different arrows that we know Hercule can be taken down by a bullet. Uh, but Hercule also, even though he's a, was a legitimate martial arts champ, by even like his universe standards, by normal human standards, there are better martial artists out there. Uh, and I don't even talking about the Z fighters. I mean, there's probably better martial artists out there. And if you go into, take, put, throw him into any Marvel universe, DC universe, any universe, with, hell, Terry Bogart would kick his ass. I, Hawkeye is just a better fighter all around, I think. So Hawkeye would win. Natsu versus Astro Boy, that one, okay, this one was legitimately tough for me to decide, because I'm like, okay, Astro Boy has survived a dip in the sun, his body is designed, and can lift 100, has 100 horsepower strength, or 100,000 horsepower strength, so, and it can fly, and has butt guns, and missiles, and all that stuff, so the question I had asked myself was, okay, does Natsu bring anything to the table that would legitimately beat Astro Boy. Does he? Uh, I mean, obviously he's got his Dragon Slayer magic, but I mean, he can survive a dip in the sun. Uh, so, f fire is not going to be alone. He can also do electricity, dark fire, 
So I'm like, okay, now we're now we're kind of getting somewhere a bit. Um, and I'm like thinking, okay, anything else? Okay, he's got he can actually with curse he can actually alter a time he can he can alter reality time and warp time to meet his own specifications as he did with uh, I guess an opponent who had time magic. So uh, that was I'm like, okay, that's interesting. So could that in theory be the deciding factor in this match? I'll say this. Nats is probably the better hand and fighter, but unfortunately Astro is just too durable for Natsu. There's nothing that he can really throw at Astro Boy that Astro Boy can't survive. So um, I think he's just going to end up wearing out Natsu and ultimately take the win. Sucks. I would have preferred to see Natsu go an extra round, but Unfortunately, no. Uh, not too lost. <clears throat> At least in my opinion, he does. Yang versus Zoro is a real... I actually would love to see this fight in depth. This would be a really cool fight. Yang's aura and semblance really made me question. Like, okay, could Zoro beat her? Like, legitimately, could he beat her? He's clearly a better swordsman. He's probably clearly a better fighter in general. Uh, he's also a much more level-headed individual. Even though she's improved, she can still lose her temper at points. So the question is, I'm like, okay, do, can he win? He's got hockey. I know that. He's also got observation... He's got armament and observation hockey. So could he could he be her? Because her semblance allows her to absorb kinetic energy, which would be a problem. But then I basically thought on it longer, I'm like, Zoro's gonna win. And our reason Zoro I think is gonna win is because of the nature of kinetic energy and the nature of physics. Now I'm not a physics major, I admit that right up front. It's been a while since I've had a physics class, but I do know still a little bit about physics and kinetic force and area and weight. So <clears throat> In essence, uh, kinetic energy is <clears throat> all the energy in motion, and then it gets transferred upon making connections. So if I throw a fist, all the energy I'm throwing in that fist basically gets concentrated into, or in my arm, in the movement, all that, gets concentrated into the fist and goes straight into the source of where it of where it's hitting. That's why Yang can usually take on someone who's usually using like a blunt instrument or fist or anything like that. However, when it comes to blades, the surface area of a blade is so minimal that the kinetic energy isn't going to disperse in, in a large enough air way to allow Yang to absorb it properly. She'll still probably get some of that kinetic energy, but the blade is still going to sink into her flesh. And the fact is that uh, Zoro is fast enough to dodge bullets, block bullets, cut through metal, so her bio her artificial arm isn't going to uh, matter anymore. Uh, she's not going to be able to hit him with her weapon. So I think Zoro's honestly going to take this fight. I really think that. War Greymon versus the Joker. War Greymon wins. Take out the Joker venom for a minute. If this fight even... If either of these two want to be serious, Joe, uh, the War Greymon just comes in and just skewers him on his Draymond destroyers and Joker's dead. Even if Joker gets Joker Venom off, I don't know if it'll work on War Greymon because War Greymon is a digital creature. So I don't know if the Joker Venom works. It can work on Superman and Wonder Woman, for God's sake. I don't know if it'll work on War Greymon given the nature of what War Greymon is. So, yeah, I'm going with War Greymon on that. Dante versus Doomsday. Um... Look, I would love to say that I feel Dante could win this fight. I tried to look up feats with the, the devil set or like sinner devil trigger or whatever. I couldn't find anything serious. I've heard universal level feats for Dante before. But the problem is, in terms of a threat, while Doomsday doesn't threaten the universe with his sheer presence, the fact of the matter is, he can take he's taken down Dark Side, do, uh, Superman before. He's taken down the Justice. There's very few individuals that Doomsday hasn't beaten before. And the fact of the matter is, you kill him, he just comes back stronger and immune to whatever killed him. I don't know, for instance, if a decapitation at this point would kill him. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, maybe. But that's assuming Dante can even cut him. Remember, he's now so strong that Superman couldn't even kill him. With blunt, you can't kill him with blunt force trauma at this point anymore. He survived disintegration, so... How exactly that works, I do not know. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I think what happens long term is that Doomsday wears out Dante, as weird as it is to say, uh, and beats and beats him and kills him. So I'm sorry to say for you, for Dante pins it there. I know you're going to get on my ass for this, but I do think he can't. I don't think he can beat Doomsday in a square fight. I just don't. Um, sorry about that. Um, but uh, yeah, moving on, Amy Rose versus Lucario. 
both are versatile because uh, Lucario's got plenty of attacks. Amy Rose has got a lot of stuff going on for her, too. I think Amy Rose does win this fight, though. Uh, she does come in with a weapon. She does have a couple extra abilities. That's something that Lucario would not be able to immediately counter. Um, but again, this is just my opinion based off the little information I have for both of them. If I did a proper who would win on these guys, maybe I'd think differently. And that's the thing. This does not, none of these matches detract from me actually doing a proper who would win on the characters. I may do them at some point if someone suggests it. So if you want me to do these actual proper who would wins, let me know. Uh, but right now, I would actually give that to Amy. Sonya Blade versus Broly. I, I don't think any of us are going to argue that's Broly. Uh, Sonya would try her best. I don't think he'd even have to go past his base. So, yeah. Uh, this was the one I actually had to add, uh, because I somehow forgot these guys. Shredder versus Mega Man X. Even though Mega Man, uh, as Shredder is the better fighter, Mega Man X is one of the only Mega Man who's actually kind of has a, is universal in his level of power. <clears throat> so, I have to go Mega Man X in that fight. Uh, and that is the end of round two, uh, part one, uh, round one, part two. Well, join us next week when we finally go into round, um, round number two. And for a little sneak peek, I won't uh, put this on the community tab for a little bit yet, but um, I'll wait till at least tomorrow, maybe Tuesday, so people have a chance to watch the video and get and see what happened. But here is the actual list. It looks a lot better than what I did previously, because we now have a lot less uh, fighters in the tournament. Um, here's the list of your round two brackets. And brackets. Brackets. And um, Mega Man got a buy because just the way the brackets turned out. He'll be fighting the winner of... Um, uh, Amy Rose and Broly. Uh, yeah, it's now we're starting to get into some, okay, who's going to win these fat matches now? Okay, uh, matches. Like it's, it's no joke now. Like this is now getting like, okay, all right, let's, uh, let's figure this out now. All right. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you folks next time. Hit that bell if you want notifications. I'll see you later. As always put what you, uh, if you have a request for who would win Star Wars Super Magic, what if, lantern pokemon team video anything you do in the channel put in the comments below let me know i'll get to that at some point so thanks for watching see you next time